Hold on. No, I'm doing a new one. Oh. Part two. Go. Yay. Mavis just died, so we're at that point. If only for a little while longer. In fact, unknown to the outside world, I guess there have been many failed biofusion experiments. That fat bastard kept the accidents a secret. The legal disclaimers had to be signed by anyone being biofused. So there'd be no legal action taken if anything went wrong. Oh yeah, what's fuck up with these engines being displayed to tourists during the off season? <laughs> Many of these engines were failed by your fusion experiments. And we're dirty. To work. They're all we're gonna die. They had to put a stop to that though. That was actually kind of funny. <laughs> his head just started falling off. Like, oh, okay, it's just sliding. Then there was death. Despite all the troubles the other engines had, Thomas had worked fine, seemingly oblivious to the other engines' problems and accidents. Keeping their problems a secret from the outside world, Sodor Research began selling the technology Why? Where did they get the Sodor? in multi-million pound deals. These countries would have less qualms about the use of fuel engines and even the modern electric trains. Even failed biofuse oh engines were being displayed publicly. What does that mean? A kind of freak show. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, well, we have two faces. It's an actual train, so too. To like, it's a push me pull you. Mighty Max. Does Mighty Max know he has two heads and two asses? Oh yeah, he's a Siamese twin. Enjoying twin engine. Like, what the hell were they thinking? I have no comment. Oh. <laughs> Cause the other one's face just blew off. <laughs> like, he was like... It just gets skin. eerily worse and worse yes. because they're trying to make it Thomas the Engine World and it's like, oh, we're effed up. <laughs> <laughs> There's like record players playing and old dudes not wanting to do shit. Oh look, he's shaking hands with Hitler. <laughs> really? <laughs> Blood! Somebody come in now. Ooh! There was a lot less blood. couldn't come to terms with what was happening to his engines. Okay. Took the only <laughs> He's on fire! Why is he on fire? Got a load of us rail staff over to his house to clean up after the body was taken away. You should have seen it. Sawdust everywhere. It took us days. Why was it but such so attempts to keep the incidents on Sodor a secret were short lived after a very public accident. Uh oh. Gordon Payton in the oh God. Sodor's first 462 configuration <laughs> engine. Oh shit. Much bigger than any other engine at the time. We were terrified that fat sh would make us fire oh, that uh, huge it, engine. This is we were shocked to discover he had insisted on being able to work on the railway. This. this is one of the worst parts. So, one night after the regular there staff are worst had finished parts? for the day, fat oh, some of the rail oh, staff God. and I fired up I don't know if I can look again. As usual, these experiments were filmed. This footage has never been broadcast before. Dr. Ruth and I filmed it all. It might be a bit shaky. It was handheld. At first, Gordon complained about the heat, and then that turned to pleas to douse the fire. But the fat bastard held us back. He wanted to see what would happen. He argued he had put a lot of work into Gordon, and the chances to get him working were too great an opportunity. He was literally cooking from the inside. By the time we were allowed to act, it was too late. Oh! Oh no! Oh, the eyeballs! I know the eyeballs. All I could do was run. I was lucky to get away with some singed clothes. Others weren't so lucky. No. Nope. Fateful few hours following the accident. Oh, I could not look again. But they might show this that clip again. I'm like, why? It's eyeballs. that any evidence would fall back on us. Can you sit over there? He kept repeating, this was all your fault, you knew the dangers, you're legally to blame. He stopped us calling for ambulances or the fire brigade. We 
told him, these are injured people here. They're going to die unless we do something. But he kept saying, no one from the outside can come in. No one can see this. Finally, someone no suggested we airlift them to hospital. Harold was banned from flying for his own safety, but we thought the risk was worth it. Fueling Harold was a nervous experience. Would he have the same reaction Mavis had? We all breathed a sigh of relief and loaded the injured people aboard. Then it all went wrong. Oh no. What happens? Oh no. Well, they did now! Harold's engine had worked fine, but what no one realized was most of Harold's lower extremities were permanently fused to his propeller system. As Harold's rotor blades began to spin, vital organs would be drawn into the motor and tear him apart from the inside. Well, now there was no covering it up. The smoke could be seen all morning, but new That's people horrible. were here in an instant. We were told to close gates and start clearing up the mess ourselves, with some help. Henry Thierry was the only 420 gauge engine on the island. A large engine that had been working on the railway regularly, he had This is effed up. Henry was called into the yard to help tidy the mess. Working mostly at night, he would count to bear the wreckage on the cover of darkness. Yeah, let's get all of your friends on the back of your thing and ride them out of here. That won't affect anyone, Hilly. And we were diverted to another shed. Henry had inadvertently been sent to shed number 17. Oh, goody! Where Thomas had been biofused into a tank engine and had subsequently been declared out of bounds. It was dark and these sheds all looked the same. I unlocked the doors and Henry rolled in. I didn't see what Henry saw. Because as soon as he put his head through doors, he bolted and reversed out. <laughs> Keith locked the shed up without seeing what was inside. But Henry had seen it all. <laughs> this is why he went in the tunnel. Shed, more than our jobs so were. Confused. But Henry had decided to speak up and confront Sir Topham Hatt. That night, he arrived at the railway controller's office. <laughs> it's a test! <laughs> I know, I'm just like, why? voices at times. He had a shouting match for ten minutes, then Henry left, back to the shed. By pure chance, he was sent like back to the same Thomas's? shed as Thomas that night, and with one sentence, he sealed both their fates. Henry only said one thing to him, stay away from Shed 17. The next day, the fat had had a new job for him. Flying Kipper route ran oh, through the night, the delivering Kipper. fresh from the docks to the mainland. Who she not comfort me when you say that? She doesn't, she's not. Oh, it's it's a famous episode. Beast, it's great. There, winter, this is not famous trap. episodes. In this is death. <laughs> it started being delivered by road to the mainland. It was safer and more cost effective. Do the cars have eyeballs? The line was declared redundant. Oh, Birdie did. Yeah, I think there's Caroline. That fat shit always hated Henry. Didn't like his cheerful manner, and he clearly had other cheerful, more like a pussy. Choices when he was a human. Fat shit wanted Henry away from the other engines, and Kipper Run was a death sentence. On the night of February the eighth, nineteen eighty-three, Henry had only been on the Kipper Run for a week. The following incidents would be made into a book and later recreated in a television series. This is the train the railwayman called the Flying Kipper. Can you believe they put it in a kid's story? Of course, that fat f could change quite a few of the facts. They couldn't know the points from the main line to a siding were frozen, and the home signal should have been set at danger, but snow had forced it down. As the train You're like jamming. The I line, know, I love the Flying Kipper theme. Henry, his driver and fireman, the points had diverted them to the adjoining siding and right into the path of another train. Oh shit! Okay, I was not <laughs> expecting that big of an explosion from something like this. Oh, okay, that's realistic. <laughs>
Oh, Jesus. Henry's driver and fireman had jumped clear before the crash. Ooh. In fact, Alan Barry died from their injuries. Slowly, in snow, the poor bastards. By midday, the recovery operation was underway, and Sir Topham Hatt had arrived. Cheer up, Henry. It wasn't your fault. Ice and snow caused the accident. Mr. Top Hat needs to get, like, assassinated or something. I don't know. And was successfully covered up by the Sodor Railway Board for ten years. There's a railway spike in points blocking them. Of course, that had disappeared by the time we got there. I'm sending you to crew a fine place for sick engines. <laughs> crew. We all knew what that meant. <laughs> They'll give you a new shape and a larger fire. <laughs> Crew was, as the time, one of only two scrap metal yards in the UK capable of handling and recycling organic material. They killed him? As well as <laughs> what? Oh my god, he killed him. Won't need special coal anymore. Well, I always kind of wanted Henry to die anyway. <laughs> Apparently we have a hatred for Henry. Damn you, Henry. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes, sir, said Henry doubtfully. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. See him again. And everything was sewn up nice and neat for that fat f <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I didn't think they were gonna show it! As news got out about Henry's accident, it didn't take long for Thomas to realize. I don't Henry know, but that dude was screaming. Because of what he knew. The next evening, Thomas had been put on his own for the night at Natford Station. Don't As do it. The driver and fireman left. Under what was left of his own steam, he set off for the Sodor research complex. Mm. He had a small amount of burning fuel in his firebox, but he was mostly moving under his own strength. It took Thomas three hours to get to the complex, the efforts to get there nearly killing him. Thomas arrived at midnight with no one around. Why? When she turns away, it's bad. <laughs> was the answers to his questions and many others. I'll hold it. Since Sodari search had I can't watch again. Oh, great. I think the worst part's probably coming up. Sadly, Thomas found the reasons inside. What is the reasons? Thomas had never been the first operation. He hadn't even been second. Mm. What shed number 17 contained was evidence of several attempts to create a tank engine with Thomas's DNA. These had been early tests made by people with no experience of an experiment on this scale. Ill-planned and unprepared, these procedures had used DNA from the human Thomas and had been as much the real Thomas as the tank engine the world had come to know and love. To us, Thomas the tank engine had been the Thomas we all knew as a boy. Part of the family the whole island's population had known and respected since Wilhelm first arrived. In actuality, this tank engine was no more the real Thomas than all the failed creations made over the 12 months before. This Thomas had all the human Thomas's memories and experiences. He had learned what Thomas had learned, known who Thomas had known, but so had all the previous failures. Wilhelm and Hans Goetze had had to learn through trial and error how to bring their Thomas back from the dead. The following oh. experiments had not had the same work put into them, resulting in the freak engines and aircraft that had developed so many problems on Sodor Island and around the world. I'll tell you when you can look. In Shed 17, Thomas wouldn't discover who he was, but in fact, who he wasn't. Who could he? That face, though. Oh my god, what the hell? <gasps> what the hell? Oh, 
Okay. Why is it doing that? And the thing in the glass is still... Okay, well, you know, that's nasty. Mm -hmm. Thank God it's only a skull. Just because all the rest of it fell off. <laughs> but this is still disturbing as fuck. No, you had it right the first time. <laughs> I don't even know the point of this part. Like, to for the, uh, continuously freak you out and to make you think about it. That's it's a haunt your nightmares. The, uh, Why did he hop out of his shell, though? How did he hop out of his shell? What's in the green tube? Obviously another version of him, but... This bitch screaming. Good black screen. Government inquiry was launched into the Evansoda Ar Island. I did not read the rest of that. Biofusion was banned the following, the following year. year. Wow, Biofusion was finally banned. Wonder why? Maybe it's because it's fucked up. The biofusion was banned. Engines was finally banned. Landscape nuclear tests. Oh, good, they're killing more of them. That looks like an actual thing. I'm pretty sure it is. Great. With an edited base. Sir Turpin disappeared without a trace whereabouts whenever I discovered he now must be a hundred and two years old. Mr. Top um, Hat controller. needs to die. Tom's TIG engine remains in a specialist unit where he is currently undergone 23 reconstructive surgeries. Oh, goody. Sadly, in child. Oh, goody! Still compulsory for all political prisoners. Oh, ging high to bed. They are cattle problem, these mothers. The hell did I just watch? <laughs> Something was scary for life. Next week, Cockle Shell Bay. Kind of surprised the I didn't throw up. Ship inquiry, we asked, how much did ITV know? And where next for Robin and Rosie? Oh, oh fucking Robin, fucking Robin. Of Cockle Shell Bay. Okay, we're gonna stop watching this now because I think I might need to throw up. <laughs> It really isn't that bad. <laughs> Bye.